Well, let's do another. So you can do another song off of the new record. Yeah, we're going to do another one now. This one's uh, called Get Down. Oh, well, sometimes I get down. Yeah, but other times I get up. I'm on the ground in the streets in my hands and my face. Yeah, the last time. Live in Studio B here on WNCW. That is Sisto. We're happy to have you all today. Get Down is on their a new record, Time in the Sun. Uh, I know you probably explain this on every interview and everywhere you ever are, but um, I, I'm sure there are folks still who do not know uh, why your name is Sisto and what it means. I uh, Yeah, well, it's, it's a big part of um, the narrative of our, our entire band, so I don't really mind reiterating it, but... Um yeah, so the name Susto is a, is a Spanish word from, for, uh, I guess it's considered a folk illness um, that really kind of happens when you go through a traumatic situation. And the, the literal translation is like soul loss when your soul is kind of scared out of your body by some sort of um, happening in your life. And uh, when I discovered that term, it was like I was going through a very tumultuous part of my mid-20s when I was kind of like questioning a lot of things about my worldview and just in a, a big state of flux. Um, and uh, so it seemed like a, a nice name for the collection of songs. And uh, I've kind of continued to write about that, like uh, navigating the trauma along with the joy of life. And um, so, you know, the name has kind of become the, uh, the, the message and also just like the, um, the point of all the songs, you know, to exploring that for ourselves, but also for the people who are listening. And, and you know, everyone's going through something all the time. So it's just, you know, a way to tap into that collective uh, experience. Now you spent some time in Cuba, and did uh, the the pickup of this name did that predate your time there, or did it sort of come out of that? It did predate it. I um I had been uh, at College Charleston studying Latin American Caribbean studies, and was um, kind of mostly focused on political movements in Latin America, but like was also just generally studying like peoples and cultures of that large region, you know. Um, and that was when I discovered the term Susto. And I also had, like, my name is Justin, like I said. My last name is Osborne. And I had been in this band that with the name started with an S. And so I was, like, looking at the page. I was reading this book, and I was like, wow, this is, like, this feels like my new musical moniker. Like, and then also with the meaning behind it and what I was going through, it just kind of felt like it just came to me. So, um, or, you know, I found it. 
And so when I went to, to Cuba, I had, you know, a handful of songs, and I was there studying the, the Cuban Revolution. I wasn't really thinking that I would be getting involved in music when I was down there. Um, but right away, I, I did, and I started going to shows and, and playing shows and writing songs and, um, and sharing the songs I already had with, you know, the friends I was making. And I told them the idea to kind of name it Susto, and, and it was kind of my, my friends and my collaborators down there that really kind of made me feel like it was their appropriate name and, and that, you know, I had something to come back home and kind of pursue. And so I, that trip was in, like, 2013, and mm -hmm. I came home and released the first album the following year and uh, I've kind of just been pursuing it ever since and exploring, you know, life through music uh, and getting to do it with a lot of really incredible, talented friends along the way. So, Indeed. What, 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 is, what was it like? I know you said, you, you know, you make musical friends. Of course you would because you're a musician, but uh, down there, what was it like being in that musical cauldron uh, of sound? It was uh, sometimes overwhelming because it's just a uh, uh, such a wealth of musical tradition and, and just like uh, just sheer talent everywhere. Um, and it's just a very musical island. And Havana specifically is a very musical town, mm. city. And, um, you know, it was just very, it was inspiring, but it was also educational because I was learning a lot about different uh, styles and genres of music, specifically Cuban ones that, um, that I hadn't really been exposed to, you know, growing up in rural South Carolina. Uh, but I also kind of was introduced to this songwriting tradition in Cuba called trova. It's like, I think it's like cognate with the word trova, troubadour, like trovadores is what like a, a trova singer would be called. And my friends, my, like my sp Spanish like reading was definitely not <laughs> on any level where I could be doing any legitimate translating. But my friends who really cared about me as a songwriter would take the time to translate the songs from some of these, like some of their famous like um, trova musicians and, and explain to me why the lyrics were so good and why what they were doing what the kind of wordplay was and everything and and it really kind of like just helped me expand as a lyricist and I think as like as a storyteller too and learn to be more confessional and also a bit playful and um yeah so it, it was just it, it was an educational experience as a songwriter but also as a human being you know getting to live somewhere completely separate and I mean it's years ago and it was just only a, a few months I was there but it's uh, it's had a lasting impact, and I still collaborate with the folks that I was collaborating with then. Even on this new record, my friend Camilo Miranda, who is one of my songwriting partners in Havana, uh, he now lives in Mexico City, and we we took a trip down there to kind of like make sure he could be involved with, uh, with the record, and um, and it's been cool to kind of keep those collaborations alive throughout the life of the band. Well, I I wondered how much that the music from there um, informs you on on the music that you all make as Sisto. There are, we can hear other influences in there. There's a lot of different ingredients, as I guess you'd say, in your music, and yet your sound. It, and I love this that you can't pigeonhole this band. You can't say you know they're this type of band or that genre band, you know, or that sort of thing. I think you have you have a, a unique way of blending a lot of things. Well, I appreciate that. Hopefully, that's a positive thing. I, I read like something the other, a week or two ago where someone I thought pretty accurately described our band with genre names and I can't even remember it now but like I just remember that it was like two sentences long and so <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, which can you know not be the best marketing tool but um but yeah I mean I think the the I mean for me the biggest influence from Cuban music on the on Susto was just that like the lyrical kind of influence of Trova music um but outside of that I mean there's a lot of influences and we have like you know we're kind of like at its core there's a lot of like straightforward Americana rock songs, but then we're also, you know, mm -hmm. utilizing synthesizers and, you know, leaning on harmonies and, and just kind of having a good time and trying to explore. And that was also something we got to do in the studio because there was no shows to go play. We just kind of were able to explore. And yeah. That's, that's fun, you know. I heard similar comments from Joe Troop when he was here from his time, you know, in South America, being an American in South America and hooking up with musicians down there. And, of course, Shea Apalache was born and all that. And they have a lot of influences like that as well.